Hello everyone and welcome to blindfold chess number 6. In this series, I play a blindfold chess game, which means that I will be staring at an empty chessboard. Your job as a viewer is to maybe compare what you think with what I think, try to visualize together with me, pause the video, and in that way we can all learn. Okay, we found a game. It seems like we're playing with the black pieces. As you can see, over here... You can see what I see in my screen, which is nothing. As I said at the beginning, I'm staring at an empty chessboard. And our opponent plays e4 indeed. So we're playing a rated rapid game. 5 plus 5. We have to be pretty quick. Considering that, I do need the time to visualize. And usually when you're not looking at the pieces, you need more time to calculate. So e4 played by our opponent. We're going to play... What should we play? We are going to play d6. I'm going to try to get to an endgame quickly. So after d4, I'm going to go ahead and play... I could play knight c6, but I'm going to play e5. And you're going to say, David, that's that's a bad move. After take takes, you're getting into an endgame right away. But number one, this is a good strategy when you're visualizing a game like this. But number two, this is actually equal. Even though I lost the right to castle, this is equal. And I have a good friend of mine who plays this religiously, or used to play this religiously, with good results. So, bishop c4 attacking f7, I do visualize that, so don't worry. I'm not going to blunder that pawn, at least not yet. And here I think king e8 is the precise way to play. As long as I watch out for knight c3, knight b5. Now... Let me close my eyes. It's funny because I can visualize better when I'm closing my eyes rather than staring at an empty chessboard. It's different for different people. But for me, that's the case. I'm going to close my eyes. I'm going to try to recall what I what I used to know in theory about this queenless middle game. Or endgame, you can call. If I recall correctly, I think king e8 may be the best move. And I think I'm going to go ahead and play king e8. I don't want to play f6 yet. I think after knight f3, f6 is... A good move. I think I can play knight d7 here as well. Um, but I already have to watch out for knight g5. So I'm going to play f6. And in all honesty, I'm not convinced I'm playing this in the best way. But I know something for sure, and that's that if knight c3, I'm also going to play c6. So I'm just preventing as much as I... Or limiting my opponent's um, lead in development as much as I can. Because essentially that's what my opponent has... On their side, they have a lead in development, so I have to neutralize that in one way or another. Uh, or not, I'm gonna have a worse position. So, bishop e3 played by my opponent. I can play bishop g4, I can play c6. I think I'm gonna play c6. Kind of prophylaxis against knight c3, maybe getting ready for b5 and a5. Maybe I can play a5 right away, followed by knight a6. Maybe I can play bishop g4, bishop h5, bishop f7, trying to get rid of this bishop on c4, which is pretty annoying. Hopefully you at home are listening to what I'm saying, pausing the video and saying, hey, wh wh where is the bishop on c4? What is he talking about? Oh, what is g4? And maybe when you're looking at this, and hopefully actually, maybe and hopefully, when you're pausing the video and you're trying to figure out which coordinates I'm talking about, that's going to improve your own visualization. But okay. Back to the game, white castled short side, which means that it's my turn. <laughs> I have different plans here. As I said, I think I can play knight a6, knight c7. I think that's where the knight belongs. I can play a5 first, but I'm scared that that pawn on a5 is going to be a vulnerable pawn. It's a, going to be a weakness. For instance, bishop b6 would attack it. Not right away. I think white would play something along the lines of a4. And after knight a6, then bishop b6. That's what bothers me. Although in that position I have knight c5. Maybe knight d7. But that doesn't make sense. Why would I put my knight ultimately on d7? With, I could do it right away. Either way, I'm going to play a5 because in that position I just stopped calculating. After a4, knight a6, I suspect there's something along the lines of either bishop c5 or bishop b4. Or knight b4. But I think black is fine. Knight c5 can't be bad either. Uh, knight c5 at the end of the day is getting ready for bishop e6. And of course, if white were to take on a6, bishop takes a6, that, that's the only piece white can take on a6 with, then I would take not with a pawn, that would ruin my pawn structure, 
Uh, I could make a case that my rook is going to come to b8 and maybe it's active, active, but I don't think so. So I'm going to take rook takes a6. White plays knight bd2, which is a very sensible move, at least on a first glance. I think I can play bishop c5. The trades of pieces benefit me because given that this is an endgame, I want my king in a in an active square such as king e7 but it seems that white has some initiative for it for example knight h4 knight f5 i don't know something tells me that i won't get away with it so so easily so i'm trying to exchange pieces now the question is how do i exchange pieces or which pieces i should i exchange and the answer to that probably not sure but probably is knight c5 followed by bishop e6 i do have to start calculating because for example even if i get knight c5 well, I already got knight c5, sorry. But even if I do get bishop e6, that's what I mean. Black, sorry, white is playing bishop takes c5. If I take back, I just lose the bishop on e6. So I have to start calculating bishop e6, bishop takes e5, bishop takes e4, bishop takes f8, and so on. Who's winning at the end of that craziness? Not sure. I'm going to play knight h6. Risky move. But I am, I am intending to play knight g4. I believe white is not in time for b4 themselves because of a takes b4, c takes b4, and knight takes a4 followed by b5. But that being said, white can play b5 in that position and it's a little bit unclear. White plays h3, so all of what I've just calculated is not going to happen, which is kind of... Chess in a nutshell, it happens all the time. Don't get discouraged. H3, I'm going to play knight f7, or that's at least what I had in mind originally when I had uh, this possibility of going, of going knight h6. But now that I think about it, maybe it's not the greatest thing. f5 is another way, I guess. So maybe f5 is a threat? He takes f5, bishop takes f5, I have an isolated pawn. But I have activity. Nah. Doesn't look very appealing. Maybe one of my plans is knight e6, knight d6. I can't play knight... Ooh, I can play knight d6. Ooh, I can play knight d6. There's a very funny line. For example, let's say white plays a nothing move. Uh, let's say if it was black to play again. I would play... Follow this, because this is quite instructive. I would play knight d6, which looks like blunders on c5. Bishop takes e5. David, you just blunder on c5. See, you can't you can't visualize as much as you can, or as you say you can. But it's not true. Or maybe it is true, but either way. Knight, knight d6, bishop takes e5. Knight takes c4. If knight takes e4... Sorry, let me do it on green. If knight takes e4, I just take back. So, white has to play bishop takes f8 if they want more. But then, I play knight takes d2. If knight takes d2, once again, I just take on f8, either with the rook or the king. With the rook is better. So if 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 white truly wants more and is greedy, they will play bishop takes g7. Uh, but then I play knight takes f3, g takes f3, and rook g8. And that is winning the bishop because there's a pin along the g file. Hopefully you at home are... Well, either I am right and all of that was accurate calculation, or... I said something wrong and you're laughing at home, which either way is entertaining, hopefully, and instructive. Sorry, I'm just blowing my nose. Very cold here. But back to the chess. After knight f7, unfortunately, white won't play a nothing move. So, for example, rook ad1, I think, already ruins a little bit of that. Or maybe it doesn't. Actually, it doesn't ruin. I think after rook ad1, knight d6 is still working because of bishop takes e5 knight takes e4 bishop takes f8 knight takes d2 if anything probably white can take on d2 now and it's gonna be a slightly better or maybe not i think knight d6 is kind of a good discovery it's a fork because it's attacking the e4 pawn and it's threatening a positional or a strategical um imbalance to to get to gain the bishop pair which is very important in fact that bishop on c4 is making my life a little bit miserable. So I do want to exchange that bishop for my knight 
Even more considering that my knight was once on g8. Okay. Rook fd1 played by our opponent after a long think. Um, I'm going to stop here for a second and calculate knight d6. Because once again, knight d6, bishop takes e5. If not bishop takes e5, then I'm taking on e4. Or taking the bishop pair. So bishop takes e5 is pretty forcing. Knight takes e4. If knight takes e4, I think I still have bishop takes c5, but knight d6, that must be fine for black. That's not, that's not, that's not worrying. That's not worrying. Rook fd1, knight d6, bishop takes e5, knight takes e4, bishop takes f8, knight takes d2. And here, here I have, if bishop takes e7, knight takes f3, g takes f3, rook g8. I think that seems to work. I'm gonna go, go ahead and play knight d6. Looks like I'm blundering a piece. But I think it's not. And our opponent thought probably that we blundered a piece too. Maybe we did blunder a piece. Okay. Yeah, we're, we're gonna take on f8 with the rook. And I think we have a slightly better endgame now. Because even though white does have the d file, Maybe what our opponent failed to understand is that after something like bishop e6, let's say, preventing rook d8. Is it preventing rook d8? It is. We have a slightly better position. There's no real invasion on the d file. I'm covering the very important d7 square. If white goes knight h4, which white does, I can either trade all the rooks and get it to a slightly better position, or I can play just a quiet move like g6, preventing knight f5. And uh, not getting its craziness. And actually, I have a very deadly threat in this position. This is why tactics are so important. Well, first of all, bishop b3 is a strategical uh, threat. But bishop d5 is also another threat. So, for example, if white... Actually, I don't know how white stops all of those. I think we have ourselves a slightly better position. I'm just going to visualize this because now the video becomes about how to convert a winning position. I can sense that this endgame is going to be favorable for me. So I start transforming and, and I change gears. I'm not thinking about how to equalize anymore. I've equalized after calculation. And now that I have a slightly better position rather, or sorry, rather than that, a better endgame. Um, I switch my gears, as I said. Okay, so not of three played. I believe this probably allows bishop d5. Not sure what my opponent wants to, against that, but bishop b3 is also annoying. Isn't it? Let's say, oh, bishop b3 is just blundering with rook d7. That's horrible. Okay, so I'm going to play bishop d5. Curious what my opponent has to do against this. I, have, I can trade rooks with rook ad8. I'm going to play bishop d5. I feel like my opponent did not evaluate that correctly. Okay, this is a, an exchange sacrifice. I'm going to put a king on... Ooh, okay, I see, I see. That was, a, that was a dangerous move I was going to play. King d6 probably lost against knight d2. I'm going to play this. Yeah. Tricky position. Knight d2, I have f5. I think. Should I go for king c5 craziness? I think I should go for king c5 craziness. Knight e4, king b4. I think that's the way to break in. Once my rooks are active, then I should be, should be favorable. But I've definitely lost some control, so... Let's see if this is still winning. I... I suspect it's going to be definitely difficult from the practical point of view, but now this allows me to play f5 followed by e4, and I'm not sure. I'm not sure why my opponent allowed me to play f5. I think knight takes f6 must have been much more difficult to 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 prove an advantage as black. But now f5, where where do you put your knight? Knight d2. That's very passive. E4. Um. I have b5, a4 ideas, but with the knight on d2, it doesn't work. 
The 95 is definitely a very, very active looking move. I should have seen that far away. Okay. Now I have that b5 idea that I, I was talking about. But I'm going to play... I'm going to play rook d7. And after 96, I think I have b5. Do I have b5? That's a crazy move. Do I have b5? A takes b5, a4. I have to really focus on this one, guys. Give me a sec. a3 is a very big threat, so b takes a4 has to be played. And now I have a couple of moves, but rook takes c4 is kind of very clear. Now I'm going to take on a4. And slowly but surely we're going to prove our, our advantage. I think I'm picking up all the low-hanging low fruit, as people say. e6 is confusing. The knight is on g5, right? Ah, I see. That's an interesting idea. Okay, I'm going to play rook b4 then. Nothing crazy. I'm going to take on b6. Knight e6 is a fair, fair try. Because after rook takes b6, there's knight c5. But knight e6, I take on d6, of course. I don't fall for any tricks. I do, sorry. Not in this case. Maybe I shouldn't speak too soon. Okay, let's take on here. I have a king on a4, which is a little bit... Not ideal, let's say. I'm going to play h6 now. Taking that knight away, forcing knight e6, or knight h3. I'm gonna take here, and I think sooner or later I will be able to force a trade of rooks. For instance, rookie three is kind of the only move here, isn't it? And g5, and everything's kind of limited now. The knight has to move again. Knight h5 runs into rook h6, I believe. And that one, I'm going to give a check. And I think I can sense here that white is in sort of a mating net. I'm just going to take my time to calculate this properly. I'm going to put both of my rooks in the first rank. White cannot take on g5 because rook g1, rook h1, rook c, g1 is going to be checkmate. And I believe that... Yeah, white is kind of losing after g4. Because of rook g1, rook h1, that same idea. And this is a desperate check. I just play king b3. Maybe white is looking for stalemate ideas. But I don't think that's going to happen. There's always f3. Okay. So that was a very instructive game, hopefully. I think that the opening went our way because we, we did want less pieces over the board. I definitely misplayed it because I don't know what was I, I was doing with this a5. I think it worked out just because of this knight d6, but there must have been something better white could have done. Um, I think once we get into this endgame, this is more of an endgame now, we have the, bish the bishop on potentially e6 already, which is better than the knight. And the rest was kind of hopefully more or less good conversion skills, although I should have never allowed this uh, c4 um b3 type of moves i think rook ac8 is probably better here um maybe king d6 is better after all because knight d2 i can take on d5 which i failed to see so king d6 probably the best move here but either way we we kept our, our composure knight takes f6 king takes b3 i suspect is still winning for black but definitely definitely was unclear and uh and yeah this b5 a4 idea to activate the rooks this is all about activity i don't care i'm sacrificing pawns I'm getting activity in exchange. And remember, a knight is very happy in closed position. So why not breaking everything pawn-wise? Uh, go for a pawn break, open files. And as you saw, those rooks proved to be very deadly once they go to the first rank. Um, and, and material didn't matter anymore. All that mattered is that rook g1 is coming. Okay. Thank you very much for watching. If you have any questions, any suggestions, please let me know. Um, thank you very much for watching, as I said, I think uh, I have been a little bit in inactive, but uh, I will continue to record and upload 
instructive videos. So if you want more of this, it would really encourage me and support me if you subscribe and you give a like. I would really appreciate it. You can do it over there to subscribe or over here to watch another of my videos. Uh, yeah, thank you very much.